Honey, show me that you love me when I'm back home. Back home. Baby, tell me that you want me when I'm back home. Back home. When I'm riding a thousand miles away from you, I keep dreaming that I'm gonna spend with you all night. This week on Titans All Access, it's the most wonderful time of the year as the men in two-tone blue kick off the 2021 season at home. General Manager John Robinson is here to talk about the offseason and much more. A.J. Brown is known for making the big plays, but he says it's the little things that make someone great. Number 11 is our Nissan Insider. Titans All Access is back and better than ever, and it starts right now. The monster, Derrick Henry, sack, Rashad Evans, A.J. Brown to the house, Brian Tannehill taking him to school. Welcome to the Bet MGM studio with Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, and this is season 19 of Titans All Access. And the season always really begins when it's time for the season opener. Are you ready? I am so ready. Mike Keith, this is going to be such a fun season, but it's gotten me thinking. There's been a lot of good season openers, a lot of memorable ones. What's one of your favorites? There are a lot. I, I think you have to talk about the game three years ago in Miami, which was Mike Vrabel's first game, which turned out to be the longest game in NFL history lasting seven hours and eight minutes. Yeah, I think that's a doozy. That's, that's definitely, the most memorable. Yeah, definitely a memorable game for so many reasons. Obviously not the outcome we wanted, but wow, what a ball game. What a ball game. It lasted forever. And this Sunday against Arizona actually marks the 22nd anniversary of the first game ever in Nissan Stadium. Titans 36, Bengals 35, Al Del Greco with a field goal late to win. The first game ever is the Titans. Wow. Yeah. That's not bad, Mike. That's not bad. Not bad. You know what else is new for the Titans? What? Receivers. Oh, yes. Yeah. Julio Jones is here. You may have heard that. Josh Reynolds is also part of the team coming over from the Los Angeles Rams. Our own coach Dave McGinnis broke the two players down on film at the Titans kickoff luncheon. Here's that. Okay, we're going to let this run first without marking it, and I just want you to watch and tell me, if you can tell me really quick, which one is Julio Jones? How about that one? They're lined up over here in what we call a two-man stack. This is against man-to-man -man defense. With our offense this year and the amount of weapons we're going to have, you're going to see a lot of this type of thing. Man-to-man, -man, post corner. Did you see him at the top of the route shove the DB off? This is a big, strong man. We're blessed with two big, strong dudes now. For a defensive coordinator now, this is going to be a nightmare. Here's what we want to see. Watch this little celebration. That's it. That's what we want to see here. All right, next play. It's a three by one split. They're in man to man. They can't play this guy man to man. They can't play single man to man on he and AJ at the same time. This is a broken play. And what he's going to do is going to react to the quarterback, react off of the quarterback. But at the end of this play, watch him use his size and his length to stiff arm the defender away from him as he goes to the end zone. And I think he and Derrick Henry stiff arm will go pretty nice together out here at Nissan Stadium. That's Julio. Next play, Josh Reynolds. Again, without highlighting them first, you can pick them out pretty quick. See the guy running down the field in the end zone with the ball? That's him. It's a straight takeoff against quarters coverage. The corner has no chance, even though he's on him. Big, tall, long receiver. That's defensive pass interference. That's touchdown, Josh Reynolds. The next play that, that we're going to see, he's going to be lined up in the slot in a three by two, talking about his versatility. He runs a double move where he's going to stick, not outside, and then go up in the seam. What I want you to watch here is for a big, long receiver. Watch how flexible he is and able to come down and take a low throw and still be able to make the completion. This is what you look for when you're looking for versatility in receivers. These two receivers are going to make a great addition to an already explosive offense. We're going to stick with the receiver theme when Titans All Access returns. A.J. Brown is not telling you his goals, but understand this, he wants more, more, a lot more. Amy Wells and the Nissan Insider next with Arthur Wan. 
Rob, what is your favorite A.J. Brown play over the last two years? The Baltimore game, um, uh, where he broke inside and, 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 and caught the, uh, the now route and uh, basically put the team on his back and got in the end zone. What people got to understand is up to that point, you know, he was, wasn't playing all that great either. But he knew it was a moment in the game. We needed him to step up big. He was disappointed in how he was playing. And he overcame that, made a play for us, and then continued to play that way the duration of the game. So, um, you know, he's a guy that when he turns it on, you're special. Yeah, that's my favorite A.J. Brown play, too. Yeah, it's hard to like any other play after you've seen something like that. The bomb he caught to set up the game-winning field goal in Houston was pretty awesome, too. Also good, but not as great as dragging humans with you into the end zone. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. We were glad to show you that, and we're glad for this week's Nissan Insider to actually be A.J. Brown in not one, but two parts. Amy Wells got to do the interview Give us a quick preview of what stood out about sitting down with Arthur Juan. A.J. Brown is excited for football this season. He is fired up, and it just blew me away. He's ready to go. Let's see for ourselves in this week's Nissan Insider with Amy Wells. Back on the grind. Back on it, back on it, back on it. I got racks on my mind. Racks on it, racks on it, racks on it. Flossing every day. Set the play. I got too many options to ever be settling on what I'm about to get paid. AJ, it feels like all of the lead up to the 2021 season, you were the talk of the town. You were what everyone was talking about, whether it was what you accomplished in 2020, what you could accomplish in 2021, your campaign for Julio Jones. It felt like every news story, all roads came back to AJ Brown. Do you like having that kind of attention, those kinds of expectations put on you? The expectations I don't really buy into, but as far as like all the other stuff, that's just me enjoying myself, having fun. You know, I feel like like can't nobody put more on my on, my, on me more than I put on myself already. So, you know, so that's that's small compared to what I what I put on myself. In your second season as a professional football player, you had a 1,000 yard receiving year. You were a Pro Bowler. What do you aspire to do in year three? Like, how do you, I mean, it's still so early in your career. Year two, year one was not good enough for me. It wasn't good enough for me. Like, I aim extremely high. Like, I don't like to tell people my goals, but I want to say it wasn't good enough. It wasn't good enough for me. So there's still more to come. There's always, always something you can improve on, always something you can, you know, find something to, to better yourself at. So. I was thinking about you a little bit in your career the other day. You've always been a part of a dynamic receiver duo. You and DK at Ole Miss, and then you and Corey Davis here, and now you and Julio Jones here. What do you like about being part of a, a duo, a team, a group? Because it feels like you always latch on and are genuinely friends with the person that you're kind of competing with. I like to be around Alpha, you know? I don't, I don't want to be around somebody who's not working as hard. Like, I want to be around somebody who who's great, you know, and, and with the addition with Julio, like, he's a Hall of Fame receiver, you know, so that's where I want to be one day. So it makes everything easy. Like, I see it firsthand, like. Have you ever thought that maybe there's something about your skill set that makes the other players around you great? Like, is there something about you that makes it easier for other guys to have success? It's my mindset. It's my mindset, how I approach each and every day, how I go about my business. You know, like I said, like I want to be the, I want to be the best, you know, and uh, I think it feed off to a lot of guys, you know, make them push themselves. Like I lead by example, I hold everybody accountable, I hold myself accountable. Most importantly, it spreads, you know, so. And it seems like there's a lot of guys on the Tennessee Titans offense that have that same mindset. Most definitely, most definitely. You know, most definitely our leaders. We just try, try to get everybody on the same page, you know, because in this league, it's, it's, it's hard. Like, and it comes down to the little things like details each and every week. That's the only thing that really matters. Like, it's not the big plays. It's what you do in, right here in, the, in front of you, the little small details to make the big plays. So, you know, once we all on board and may have a shot at that Super Bowl. And it all comes back to those mystery goals that you want, fella. Yeah, I won't tell you. I won't tell nobody, so don't, don't feel too bad. <laughs> But that's not all of Amy Wells with A.J. Brown. No, you can't have enough Amy Wells and A.J. Brown. There's more coming up. Later in Titans All Access. Stay tuned.
Jarrell Casey came back to Nissan Stadium on September 2nd to announce his retirement from the National Football League. The Titans drafted the defensive tackle in the third round of the 2011 NFL Draft. And in nine seasons with the Titans, Casey totaled 469 tackles, 51 sacks, and eight forced fumbles. After announcing his retirement, Casey toured the locker room and took the field one last time. That's when he got to hear from many of his former teammates, including Wesley Woodyard, Derek Morgan, Brian Arakpo, Michael Griffin, and Kevin Byers. John Robinson joins us on Titans All Access, presented by our good friends at Duncan. One of the pieces of news that hit last week, Jarrell Casey comes back to Nashville and retires. Your best memories of number 99. I mean, talk about an outstanding uh, player on the field, a great teammate, a hard worker, a leader, a captain. Just so many positive things that he did in, in the locker room. And then the impactful plays that he had out on the, uh, on the field to help us win football games. And then the community. You know, he was such a, a revered member of this community for, you know, how he and his wife gave back, you know, trying to make Nashville a better place and couldn't be happy for him to retire tight. All right, let's turn to this week, moving forward towards the Cardinals. What's your favorite thing about kickoff weekend? Well, it's the start of all the hard work that, you know, you've put in, you know, whether it's free agency, it's the draft, you know, through training camp, which is a grind. It's the culmination of all of that. You know, guys are out there and, and, and we're starting to play meaningful football. We had some preseason games this year, which was good for, for our football team. But now all cards are on the table and it's time to go out and, and show what we're capable of. Several free agents join this football team. I want you to talk about one of them in particular, Danico Autry. What does he add in the defensive line? He's a veteran guy. He started out in Oakland when the Raiders were in Oakland. He went to Indy. We've played against him a couple times a year for the last couple of years. A disruptive player gives you a lot of flexibility you know, for Coach Bowen, Shane, and his staff to put him in some advantageous positions to be disrupted. Your first round pick, Caleb Farley, had to start a little bit later in camp because he was coming off of a surgery. How has Caleb Farley progressed? Improved. He, he, he's starting to stack days together in practice, uh, getting more confident in the technique, uh, understanding where his leverages are, you know, with the help, whether it may be from a linebacker or, or from a safety, you know, more averse to the defense, the scheme, the terminology. It's all different, and it's showing on the practice field as he continues to improve. Todd Downing is the offensive coordinator now of the Tennessee Titans. Will we notice much of a difference in the offense with him taking over from Arthur Smith? Well, we're probably going to try to hand it to Derek several times and let him run with it and throw it to the guy that's open. So I would say schematically, that's one of the things that we wanted to do with Todd was to kind of keep the terminology, keep the offense the same. You're certainly going to look back and, you know, hey, I want to throw this out because it really doesn't work well with us. I want to improve on this. I want to add this. Uh, he's added some, you know, some nice wrinkles in there for the offense. But, you know, we're going to stick to our bread and butter and, and what we know what to do. Arizona Cardinals, the opponent this Sunday. What impresses you about them? I mean, they got a lot of playmakers, you know, especially a quarterback. You know, Kyler Murray he's got a great arm. He's elusive. He can run. He's fast. Uh, Hopkins on the outside. You know, they got AJ Green. They, they've got players uh, on offense that can you know, push the ball down the field. They're an up-tempo offense. Probably not going to see a whole lot of huddling from those guys. That's what Cliff did when you know he came out of Texas Tech. And, and defensively, that you know they've got players on that side too. They added JJ Watt in the offseason. Uh, Chandler Jones is a really good football player. Buda Baker is in the back end is good. Xavier Collins is their first round pick at linebacker. Uh, so they've got a lot of players on both sides of the football. What does it mean to the Titans to have a home game to open 2021? Yeah, I mean, it's always great when you can start at home, you know, kick the season off in front of your fans, not have to get on a plane, ride a bunch of buses to the stadium. You can kind of stick to your normal routine day in and day out and just carry that over into Sunday. But the main thing is being able to run out of that tunnel, see a lot of two-tone blue. Great to see you again. I can't wait. I know. It's here. John Robinson with us on Titans All Access, presented by Duncan. Amy Wells rejoins me for more right after this. Titans Amy and Coach Mac podcast. It's you and I, you know, talking to a lot of people of my acquaintances around the league, very close acquaintances. Because we really do just talk ball all the time. I think it covers the whole entire spectrum, you know, of what the National Football League is, all the way from the technical aspect of it, from officiating to the women in the National Football League. But then we're also going to have a lot of fun, and with Coach Mac, you know, there's never a dull moment. And you ask what it is, it's the greatest thing you'll ever listen to. <laughs> I mean, that's basically. Tune in. That's the Titans Amy and Coach Mac podcast coming soon. I'm excited about the Titans Amy and Coach Mac podcast, which is actually out now where you get your podcasts. Go jump on, be part of it. 
What's the first episode all about? So we've got Jake Plummer, former Arizona Cardinals quarterback. He is our special guest. We figured it was appropriate given the upcoming opponent. But you've also got a lot of Coach Mack, a lot of ball. We're talking about a lot of things. You definitely don't want to miss it. So go subscribe to it. Listen. We're ready. We're excited. Rate and review. Rate and review and subscribe is what the youths say. That's right. The Titans Amy Coach Mack podcast. A lot of great conversation. Speaking of great conversation involving Amy, how about part two of her talk with A.J. Brown? More of our Nissan Insider now. If you woke up this morning, you win in half of the battle. You see that big smile? This what we love right here. Press it cost you everything, but happiness is free. And help before wealth is what my village taught me. You got a crown on your head for a reason. reason. You can do whatever you believe in. Now let's go to work. Do you need to take a minute sometimes and kind of get away from it, turn off social media, get off your phone, and really just turn it off? Yeah, I do it, I do it all the time. I take breaks, I don't know, like a week or two, or I'm reading a book, and I just turn off social media. Before I get back on social media, make sure the book is finished, just to clear my mind, because it can get a little big sometimes, and you know, you just try to stay, stay locked in, so. The only way for you to win is be consistent. You said you read to unwind. What kind of books does someone with dreams and desires and talent like you do, what kind of books do you read? Like Harry Potter? What no, are we? <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, really motivational books. That's awesome though. Just to try and expand your mind on the field, off the field, where are you kind of trying to feed your brain, I guess? I mean, once I leave here, like, like I'm always trying to like find something like to better myself. Sometimes I have to like, like I said, get away from, get away from the game, but the books like that just to, just see if I can like lock in to a whole nother level, like take myself to a whole nother level. So just reading little books like that. And then if I if I like a book or I like a page, like I read the page a lot. Like I start reading a book and I keep reading the page like every day, like to remind myself what I'm trying to do. Do you have hobbies? Yeah. Like what are they? What do you do? Um, <laughs> I'm a big movie guy. I like to watch movies. Uh, I like to shoot pool. I'm really good at shooting pool. Uh, I like to go to the movie theater like during the day when there's nobody there. So I'm in the movie theater by myself. So you, there are ways that you really turn off your brain and get away from the sport. Not every football player does that. Not every guy is able to separate the on the field from being a real person. And it sounds like you can. I got dreams and aspirations to be the best, but you know, some, too, much of, too much of something is, is, is bad. It gets, to, it gets to a point where it gets bad, so, you know. Does having a daughter help with that? Oh, it helps a lot. It helps a lot. When I come home and I see the smile, like, Nothing else matters. Like, no matter what day I have, like, nothing else matters, so. How has she changed the way that maybe you approach your job? My job, I mean, I always have, like, like I said, our dreams to be the best. You know, that'll never change, but as far as my daughter, like, she give me that extra motivation, you know, like, it's a really, like, who I'm doing it for, to give me, make me do that extra rep. She always pushing me, so, yeah. Now, she's still pretty little right now, but as she grows up, she's going to grow up watching her dad on a football field. What do you hope she takes away from watching you perform on the field? To be honest, I just I just want her to be proud of me, you know, proud to say I'm her dad, and I think everything else is handling herself. So not too worried about all the other stuff, like like what I do on the field, like because she doesn't, she's not gonna know anything about none of that. So as long as as long as I'm, I'm in her life and you know spending time with her, that's all she cares about, you know. I'm cool with it. Got to give you a fist bump on the A.J. Brown interview. Thanks, Mike. Awesome stuff. Thanks. He's a, he's a pretty cool dude. Even though that's usually my segment. Yep, show's over, Mike. It's mine now. Well, the show's not over until our last segment, which is where we're going to talk about putting in the work and even some Titans keys to beating Arizona. I'll actually be able to talk coming up on Titans All Access. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. What's good, Tennessee? It's hard to say we're clocking in because we never stop. Let's go to work. Keep up the work, Tennessee. We will too. Tighten up. Mike, those pieces always get me so fired up, but not as much as Mike Keith's keys to the game. That's what really gets me going. Even me yelling sacked? 
Well, that's fine, but not that's as fine. great Thank you. as your Thank keys you. to the game is my favorite part of every show. Bring the heat, Mike Keith. Let's bring the heat right now. The keys to the game we begin with contain Kyler. We're talking about Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray is a great passer. We know that. He won the Heisman Trophy, right? But he is a fantastic runner. He can make a 50, 60, 70, 80-yard run in a heartbeat. The Titans know he's going to throw it. They know he's going to complete passes to DeAndre Hopkins. They get it. Don't let him beat you with his legs. That's where he can change the ball game in an instant. All right, what's the second key to the game? Second key to the game is let's block J.J. Watt. Why not? It's a good key. Guess what? He doesn't play for Houston anymore. He plays for Arizona. Played him the last game of the regular season last year. Did not do a phenomenal job blocking him in that game. Quite frankly, never done a phenomenal job blocking him in his career. He has more sacks against the Titans than any other team in his career. Let's block J.J. Watt. Let's do that. Are there three this year? Generally, there are three. Okay, let's go with the third one then. Okay, it's about execution. Let's make kicks. Let's catch passes in our hands. Let's not fumble. Let's punt it well. Let's return kicks. Not a lot of penalties. Good execution. I think if the Titans do that, they got a great shot at beating the Arizona Cardinals on Sunday. Mike Keith, it feels good to be back. It does feel good to be back. It really does. And we're back again next week with another edition of Titans All Access as we prepare you for a trip to the Great Northwest. Yes, we're going to see Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks next week. We'll get you ready right here on the Titans All Access program. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.